So once you've gotten through the first two uh, parts of the book, we turn to the third part. And this is my favorite part because now that I've given students this terrific toolkit to use, I'm going to let them apply it to a range of policy issues and applications that are going to feel really relevant to their own lives. And so the way this part is structured is each chapter is an individual policy issue. You can pick up the ones you want, drop the ones you don't, teach them in any order you want. So let's start with the first one, international trade. I begin by telling my students that globalization may just be one of the biggest, most important forces of their lifetime. They need to understand it because it's going to shape and change the opportunities that are available to them through the rest of their lives. We want to give them the tools to understand, interpret, and make sense of all of these changes that are coming. The next chapter is externalities, which I think is one of the most important issues to teach students because it's something they see immediately, that there are spillover effects in markets, that there are negative externalities, but I also want them to understand positive externalities. Why is uh, their justification for government involvement in lots of areas, like in supporting public goods um, or in correcting negative externalities? They've gotten the great foundation of supply, demand, and equilibrium, and now they're going to see what happens when a firm's private marginal costs are not equal to society's marginal costs, or a consumer's private marginal benefits are not equal to society's marginal benefits. Betsy and I each teach this in a slightly different way. I'm going to start by saying climate change is the existential threat of your time. Let's see how economics can solve that problem. Betsy instead begins by saying externalities are all around us. I want to give you the tools to recognize them so then you can go on and fix them. Both are important and our students care a lot about climate change. They care a lot about these kind of uh, externalities and it helps them see that economics can be used to analyze the kind of issues they care about. Economics for the social good sister, so let's move on to the labor market. <laughs> uh, that's where they're going. They're about to graduate. They care a lot about what determines employment, what determines wages and so on and so we're going to walk them through how do we adapt the supply and demand framework in order to better understand the labor market? How should they think about, as, a, as an employer, as a manager, should they hire another worker? How should they think about, as a worker, whether they should supply another hour of their labor to the market? I'll tell you a secret now. Both Betsy and I are labor economists. We actually met at the labor seminar, so you won't be surprised that one chapter of labor is not enough for us. Um, so we move on to... Really, I think the aspects of the labor market that students care a lot about. Why is it some people earn a lot and some people earn less? Uh, we can understand this in terms of thinking about um, things like differences in skills and human capital. We can think about compensating differentials. We can think about the role of discrimination. My students are very keen to learn about that. You know, when I teach this material, one of the things I start my lecture with is asking students how much they think the typical um, uh, undergrad earns compared to the median a person with only a high school degree. And every year, the vast majority underestimates that substantially. So it's a chance to show students what their degree is actually worth and to help them understand what other types of criteria are going to be worth, uh, some of the other skills that they're building, what they're going to be worth in the labor market. Don't forget to mention that economics majors actually out earn the average uh, college graduate. I accidentally slipped that into class every time. The last chapter in this section is something that it's really important to today's students, which is understanding inequality, redistribution, and our social uh, safety net and social insurance. And so this allows you to teach students how economists think about measuring inequality, how we think about mobility, um, how we think about redistribution. Uh, we think about poverty. We introduce real world data to them as they can come to, I mean, they're young. They've got an emerging social conscience, and what we can do is feed them data and frameworks to help shape that. And so that they can make whatever decision and conclusion they come to make with facts. So it's not about telling them what they should or shouldn't think, but Absolutely. it's actually giving them the data and the tools to analyze that data so that they can make their own decisions as they emerge into adulthood about how they feel about the world. And along the way, we show them about the interplay between economics and ethics, and that's also something the students really appreciate.